Hi, it's Anne Emery. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through some revenue and expenses numbers for an organization that I worked with recently. I'm going to show you their before version, how they were currently presenting their numbers at their quarterly board meetings. And then I'm going to show you three different after versions. I'm going to walk you through a couple of the Excel how to's, but this video is more a demonstration, more about the big picture data visualization approach than the nitty gritty Excel clicking. Um, okay, so here's what the data looked like. I've anonymized it, obviously. I, I changed what their exact revenue sources were or what the you know exact dollar amounts were. Revenue was things like where they got their grants from and where their funding came from to run their organization and expenses were you know the typical business expenses payroll different overhead expenses benefits for staff um, you know paying their rent, keeping their roof over their head, things like that. Okay, so here is the before version, and guess what? It is two lovely pie charts. Now, what they would do, this is size for, uh, you know, like a printout, it's pretty big, it's nine by five inches size for a PowerPoint slide. They would paste this into PowerPoint, um, PDF it or just print out from PowerPoint directly and bring that handout to their quarterly board meetings. And, you know, it was really odd actually, they didn't have the exact dollar amounts on top of the slices or the percentages. So you'd, you'd really just get a bird's eye view of what was going on, just like, was this sliver big or small? Um, now pie charts are not inherently evil. Some people out in the data viz world are super anti pie chart. I'm not. Pie charts have a time and place. I have an entire blog post with different guidelines for pie charts of when to use them and when not to use them. This is an example of when not to use them because uh, for a couple of reasons, there are so many slices. It's really hard for our brains to read pie charts anyway. We can't accurately kind of judge this slice versus this slice versus this slice versus this slice. It's just not a calculation that our minds are wired to do. Um, just too many slices. Pie charts are going to be better off with just two slices or just three slices. The fewer slices, the better. Um, it's also really hard to read these side by side because you're kind of like reading one slice and then you jump over to the other slice. It's a lot of zigzagging. Um, but the main problem with this pie chart that bothered me was that I felt like the organization was looking at the numbers in isolation. So they look at just quarter one's spending habits and, and funding, and then just quarter two and just quarter three and just quarter four. But what I wanted for them was for their leaders to be able to manage the data more effectively, for them to be able to monitor what was going on more effectively, and for them to be able to see patterns over time, to see more history, like how are we doing in quarter one compared to quarter two compared to quarter three, and put yourself in the viewer's shoes. So think if you're like the board member or the head uh, leader of this organization, what you'd have to do is you'd be sitting at your meeting with your printout, like your full page eight and a half by 11 printout, and you'd be looking at, let's say, quarter one data. And then if you, or let's say quarter four, let's say it was the end of the year, and you wanted to say, well, how are we doing compared to last quarter? You'd have to actually find your printout. Hopefully you have it with you in your briefcase or in your purse. So you'd have to like scroll through your phone to find the PDF from three months ago from that meeting. You'd have to hold both of the pieces of paper up next to each other, or you'd have to like look at both screens if you're looking at your phone or at a laptop. And you'd have to zigzag your eyes from this pie chart over to this pie chart, from this pie chart, over to this pie chart. And it would just be really hard to jump around like that. My rule of thumb is you should never ever make your viewers have to look in different documents to compare numbers, or even on different parts of the page. If you want them to compare numbers, place those numbers physically close together to make the comparisons natural and easy. So farewell revenue expenses pie charts, no more. You can say goodbye, you're done using them after today. Here's option A for a makeover. Okay, so I've got my data here, revenue and expenses. And okay, here is option A, is at the very least, it's two bar charts. It's easier for our brains to compare the lengths of a bar than to compare angles like slices of a pie or to compare things like circumference and radius and area of circles. Our brains can't do mental math like that, but we can compare lengths pretty naturally. That's just what we're designed to do. So at the very least, you would just have all the revenues listed out and all the expenses. Now, this is one uh, bar chart. This is a trick I do a lot. I just wanted to show you how I inserted this. Can you see where the data is linked in this table? It's one single chart. So to insert this chart, I highlighted this entire area. There's some intentional white space, some intentional blank empty rows. And then you just go to the insert menu, just like you would insert a chart any other day of the week. And you have to kind of hunt in your icons to find the chart that you want. You just go right over here to a 2D bar chart. And then I cleaned it up a little bit. So one of the first things I did was I flipped this upside down. I used the button that says categories in reverse order. And then I just deleted a bunch of this and I deleted 
and I deleted and I got rid of this line, no more outline. And then, oh, I added the data labels exactly on the bars. Let's see, what else did I do? I changed the gap width. I probably set this to about probably 50%. That's usually what I go with in every single chart. Um, and then I just changed the colors. Revenue is usually like a positive thing, a thumbs up. So I use blue or green for those numbers. Expenses is kind of like negative numbers, thumbs down. So I use either a red or an orange uh, for those numbers. So I usually use blue and orange kind of over and over again because they're colorblind friendly for most people. Um, let's see. And then I sized it for a PowerPoint. So I just went over here to format and I set it to be five by nine inches instead of a teeny tiny three by five chart. Um, oh, and the benefit, if this isn't obvious of it being one chart, not only is it faster to create than having one bar chart on top and one bar chart on the bottom, but check out this vertical axis. It's perfectly aligned. So the scale is the same on each graph. Every graph, like the, the top chart for revenue and the bottom chart for expenses, they start at the exact same zero. It's not that like one chart starts here and one is indented a 16th of an inch and it kind of looks kitty wampus. Uh, that's no good. Uh, uneven alignment really bothers me. It just looks uneven. It looks unpolished. And they also have the same ending point on the scale. So you could accurately compare like this $2 million amount is proportionally the right amount compared to this $2 million amount. It's not that one stretches from like zero to 2 million and the next chart stretches from zero to 5 million. They're very nice and standard. If you did this as two separate charts, let me do it really quick just to show you as a comparison. It's gonna look funky. Okay, so here's the first chart. Let me delete this other one in the background so it's not distracting us, it's not in the way. And then, okay, I'm gonna enter this chart separately. It might be kind of similar. Let's see how off it is. I'm curious now. Do you see how even the bars on the top are thicker? Like they're they're uh, like wider or taller than the bars on the bottom. And they have a, they're pretty close to the same starting point. They almost have the same starting point. Are they exact? I don't know, sometimes they're off. Sometimes one bar will be like this based on how long the category names are. And that is no good. Okay, this one goes to 2.5 million. What does the other one stretch you? Okay, also 2.5. But if the numbers were drastically different, like let's say this was 3 million, then the scale that Excel guesses for you is different. Okay, does that make sense? So it's, it's one single chart, that's what this thing is. Okay, at the very least, option A, one single bar chart. Option B, I added a little bit more contextual information here. Um, I try to put myself in my viewer's shoes again and I anticipate what types of mental math they might be doing. And I try to stop and like say, time out. I'm never gonna make somebody have to grab their calculator when they're reading one of my graphs. I'm never gonna make somebody have to do addition or subtraction in the margin of their handout during a meeting. What a waste of meeting time. So I thought these people probably wanna know what the total revenue is. They probably wanna know what the total expenses are. So I simply added a text box on top of my graph. I just kind of clicked in the center of the graph to grab this inner plot area. And you can move this you know, back and forth to make space. So I just moved it over, inserted a text box, and I just manually typed in, you know, I figured out the, I did a sum formula equals sum to figure out the total. I didn't actually grab a calculator to do that clearly, but then I just typed in the text box and I color coded the text so that you know, blue text, you know, that's the revenue text and orange text is the expenses text. And then at the end, I grouped all these items together. So I made sure that this text box, it's already grouped, so it's not gonna work. And this text box and this graph uh, we're all part of the same object so that when I paste them into a PowerPoint slide later, if I need to, or if I paste them into a Word document later, they all move as one object. I'm not pasting the graph and then pasting another text box and then pasting another text box. That's way too much work. Okay, so that's option B. Here's option C. This is my favorite. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about how much data they need. I'm thinking about the time periods that they need. And I was anticipating, um, and, and when I shared this draft with the group, they they loved it. Like we, we came up with this together too. Um, I didn't want somebody to have to grab their quarter four handout and their quarter three handout and their quarter two handout and their quarter one handout and like be looking across different documents or be looking across different screens too much work. So I put everything on one page for them. I added more trend data in the form of a simple one page dashboard or a one page handout. It's just a static dashboard. It's something that you could PDF and bring to a meeting or you could PDF and send it through email to somebody. Um, you could 
you know, you just print this directly. That's your meeting handout. So at the top, I've got a placeholder. You can download this. I'll include a link um, at the bottom of the video of where you can purchase this template just for five bucks if you want to, you know, type your numbers into it and tweak it yourself. So you'd type in the title here. It would be something like ABC Companies Financial Dashboard. You can type the date over here in this corner. I usually include some type of introductory text. I've simply just merged these cells across my sheet. Um, something in layperson language that says, hey, this is what this dashboard is all about. It's about revenue, it's about expenses. This comes from our accounting department. You know, if you have questions, contact this person. Here's their email address. It encompasses this time period, like something very, very basic to onboard your user and make them feel like this isn't so overwhelming. Then I've got the revenue section with another little um, introductory sentence that says like, hey, this is what our revenue is all about. It comes from five different categories. Here's our year end revenue, whatever the main gist of this top section is. And all I've done is I typed out the revenue sources. These are different numbers from the other graph because again, they're just fake numbers that I made up. And I've got a column for quarter one, quarter one numbers, and quarter two, and quarter three, and quarter four. And then here are the quarterly trends, which I am displaying with spark lines. I have another whole YouTube video. It's 20 some minutes long, just on creating spark lines or you can Google how to make spark lines. They're really, really fast, but they give you a gist of kind of whether something is going up or whether something's going down or whether something is pretty flat over time. And then I anticipated these viewers probably want to know the year end totals. They want to know well, how much total did we spend across line A of our dashboard, you know, not just quarter one and quarter two, but like the whole year altogether. So this cell has a very simple sum formula in it that does the math for you. And then this little bar chart is actually a data bar. So I'm also gonna link to a tutorial I have about how to create data bars in Excel. They're right under this uh, little icon that's hiding in plain sight, right on your home tab, data bars. You just insert a data bar, they're ready to go. Uh, and then I've got the same thing with expenses down here. Now this page one section, it's not a watermark. This does not get PDF or printed. I'm gonna save this and uh, you'll see what it looks like should look pretty nice and polished. Save it right here as a PDF. And it looks like this. This is what you'd print. This is what you could email around. It's a beautiful one pager with very little ink on the page. It just shows you the bare essentials and nothing more. How are we doing quarter by quarter? And then you see that line chart. How do we do for the total year, our year end snapshot? You see the little bar charts and you're good to go. Um, hopefully, I think, much more effective than just looking at one quarter at a time in isolation and much more effective than the two pie charts. All right, thank you so much.